One of the most nostalgic times on the internet for me was years ago when Siren Head was absolutely blowing up. There were fan arts and videos and theories and video games and rip-off video games, animations, movies, grifted merchandise and plushies and MatPat and the SCP Explain channels were all talking about it. It was literally everywhere. But among the fame and the internet glory that Siren Head has received lies a darker and more controversial underbelly. Copyright disputes and stolen trademarks and grifted intellectual properties and much more has plagued Trevor Henderson and the Siren Head entity for years now. What started as his magnum opus has turned into something of a nightmare. And today I will be explaining all of it, every piece of information about Siren Head and its history and its lore and its legacy. This is the complicated and controversial legacy of Siren Head. So the first part of the video will be the description of the actual entity, its behaviors, its lore that's been given by Trevor himself, and all of the actual information you'll need about Siren Head. Then the second half, then the second half of the video will be about the scandals and issues with copyright, trademark, brain rot, and all that stuff that I discussed in the intro, as well as the entire legacy that Siren Head itself leaves behind on the internet. So if you want to skip to certain parts of the video, you can check the timestamps, they'll be there. If you already know all the lore about the entity, you don't need to watch the first part, and you can just skip to the second part. If you want to watch the whole thing, then be my guest. I'd really appreciate it. And I don't want you to like the video yet. I want you to wait till you watch the entire thing. And if you actually enjoy it, then I want you to leave a like, all right? So without further ado, let's get into the explanation of the entity. Physical description. Siren Head is this creature and is pretty well known for how massive it is. Standing at around 40 feet tall and having sirens on top of its neck where a head should be. This thing is pretty recognizable. Its arms and legs are disproportionately long and skinny, and its arms are almost as long as this entire body. The hands of the siren are bony and crinkled, and are typically down at its side. On its shoulders, where a normal neck should be, is a long skinny pole that functions as its throat. And it's on top of this pole where the two sirens are. Around its neck are some thin black wires that coil up to the speakers on the top of its neck, and these wires run down the body, into the body, and around the abdomen too. Simply put, this thing is terrifying. Behaviors and Origins Siren Head is normally found in rural towns that are out in the middle of nowhere. The sticks, the boonies, the boondocks, whatever you call it. And it was first sighted in the Arizona desert of 1966, when a family that was actually on a vacation took this first known picture of Siren Head. But it's thought that Siren Head might have been here since the dawn of man, who knows. This family was actually at a graveyard at dusk when they glanced over and saw the creature lurking in the darkness. Some think Siren Head isn't from our reality and is some sort of reality-shifting entity that uses the earth as its hunting ground. Some think there's only one Siren Head, and some think that there's many. But what is known is that Siren Head is absolutely terrifying. This creature can emit static from its head that makes an unfathomably loud sound. And the sound itself isn't of this world. It can also be used as an attack mechanism by Siren Head itself. And victims of this entity have often been found with burst eardrums or bleeding gums, all of which are signs of intense loud noises. This creature is very fast and very hostile, and its coloration allows it to blend in with the darkness and the trees pretty well. Its entire aura is cryptic and dark, and it feels like you're not supposed to be looking at it when you see pictures. The main victims of this entity are hikers that have been found deep inside of the wilderness. It lures these victims by imitating noises, specifically someone yelling for help or someone yelling that they're injured. After it makes the initial sound, it'll walk deeper and deeper into the woods until no one can hear your terrified scream as you look up and see this thing staring back at you. The creature is thought to be able to change and adapt over time and that it never looks the same, just similar. Hunting Tactics This cryptid hunts by standing completely still, and as I said earlier. It lurks in and behind the trees, and stands as still as one. 
at the same time it does this, it broadcasts noises from its face to lure victims in. It's not known that the siren head hunts in order to eat, or just for the thrill of it all, but either way, it's creepy enough. Some think that when siren head gets a victim, it takes that victim's voice and adds it somehow to its own library of sounds. Others think that it just hunts for sport. When Siren Head does lure someone close, it often makes other loud noises to conceal the screaming of this unfortunate victim. The fact that it has to hide the scream, however, might mean that it's got some sort of weakness, because you'd think that something this powerful wouldn't need to hide its dirty works. But who really knows? Typically, it uses a stalking type of method to hunt. But it's also theorized that sometimes Siren Head can use certain types of sonic blasts to wipe out big groups of people. On its two feet, this creature can run 25 miles an hour, but on all fours, it's estimated that it can run around 250 miles an hour, which is extremely fast, if you didn't know. Power and abilities. Acousticinesis is the main ability that Siren Head has. It's the ability to mimic voices. This is how it hunts and lures its victims deeper into the wilderness before it ultimately strikes. Its next power is heightened strength, which obviously means that it's strong. There's been strange broken trees found and bodies maimed in very strange ways that are thought to be related to siren head attacks. There's also things like track innovation, which is the ability for it to blend into its surroundings, things like enhanced speed, which is being really fast, and other things that are very similar to these. But possibly the weirdest and most outlandish part of Siren Head's lore is just how old it is. Siren Head is a very, very ancient being, with evidence inside of its lore of its existence being found all the way back in ancient Native American cave paintings, which you're seeing now. That puts the creature at several thousand years old at the youngest. And during these prehistoric times, it kind of seems like Siren Head was a direct enemy of humanity. Like there was a blood feud. You can probably see why as well. Siren Head enjoys eating people and people typically do not like being eaten. Interestingly enough though, the Long Horse, which is another creature from the Trevor Henderson lore, is also as old as Siren Head. And luckily for humanity, it actually has taken humanity's side to defend us against Siren Head in this canonical lore. But the rivalry between Siren Head and the Long Horse is depicted in those cave paintings I mentioned. If you want more information on the Long Horse itself, I have a whole video about it. Go check that out. This video is about Siren Head. But now that you know about the physical attributes, its history, and its actual description by Trevor, let's go ahead and bring it back to the modern times, and let's talk about the impact, its legacy, and the controversies and the brain rot surrounding it. Trevor Henderson created the Siren Head entity way back in 2018, which feels like a lifetime ago, I am getting old, with his first tweet featuring it going pretty viral. You've all seen the classic first post and picture that he made about it, probably. And from this simple post, it was immediately a success and a staple in what I would consider a young internet horror culture. And since its creation in 2018, it has endured many scandals. Countless games and short films and animations and productions without the consent or authorization of the creator, Trevor Henderson, have been done. And I'm not talking about YouTube videos like this, talking about it. I'm talking about for-profit things, like merchandise and plushies and shirts and all that kind of jazz. Please don't sue me, I'm a huge fan. Many, many different times, people have created lore and information and media about Siren Head that's either false or not from Trevor, and they haven't even given Trevor Henderson the credit in the description or in the credits of the movie or short film or anything. They haven't even acknowledged that he created Siren Head. And during all of this, Henderson has expressed his anger and frustration with the entire thing. Here are just a few examples. A tweet from May 28th of 2020 reads as follows. Hey, recently I filed a copyright strike on an animated Siren Head video. I should have asked them to take it down instead of going right through YouTube. That was my mistake. This last month has been really stressful. I've since taken back the copyright strike. And several other situations such as this have arisen over the years. 
Things that come to mind are the SCP Explained channel making a video claiming that Siren Head was an SCP when Trevor Henderson staunchly says that it is not an SCP at all. It's not related, it's not anything of the source, and just other things of that nature. And as you've seen by the screenshots and, and the videos I've shown to you, these things and these pieces of media are pulling in millions of views. There was a video at the beginning, had 40 million views, and Henderson was not mentioned anywhere in that. And honestly, Henderson isn't even asking for much. He's not putting an outright ban on content about Siren Head at all. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Trevor replied to a tweet a few years ago that reads as follows. Fun fact, the creator of Siren Head doesn't like the fact that people make games and mods and stories out of his creation. Also, most of them didn't even ask of his approval. Trevor then replied, I love when people make games and mods and stories. It's just nice when they credit me. He's not even asking for every single person to go through him for permission or anything. He's just asking that they credit him for his works of coming up with Siren Head and the entity and its intellectual property. And if I was Trevor Anderson, I would also be extremely angered by this. These videos are absurdly popular. Every single video that you search up of Siren Head and the movies and the animations, they have millions of views. And some of them literally don't even mention him at all. And that makes him lose out as an artist on notoriety and, and monetary losses. It's just like bad business practices to do that, obviously. Now, in another weird twist, Henderson doesn't even have the trademark to his own creation. Because a company known as Yangzhou Ocus Trading Company swooped in and got the trademark of the Siren Head intellectual property for marketing and merchandise purposes before Henderson even thought about it. This means they can make money using the Siren Head entity and design on shirts and plushes and other things that they create and sell. Trevor had tweeted about this kind of thing recently in a response to a new Siren Head game coming out where he said that he's tired of having to deal with this and he doesn't even have the trademark to his own creation. That tweet has since been deleted and I can't find it, but that's what he said like three weeks ago. But something not other than the trademark being stolen and works being completed without his consent or credit is happening on YouTube. Something arguably as bad or worse as that is happening. The brain rot of Siren Head. Now, as sad as it is to say, uh, the popularity and ubiquitousness of Trevor Henderson's creations like Siren Head have become so popular and so much on the forefront of internet culture that content farms and kids YouTubers have been using the Siren Head entity and that kind of thing in videos for brain rot and content farm videos, specifically for the uses of just clickbait and shock value and outright deception. Like if you go on YouTube right now and you just search up Siren Head and then you click most recent, the things that come up are just like nonsensical, strange Minecraft or Gmod or other kind of games that involve like Skibbity Toilet, Thomas the Tank Engine, and Siren Head also in the thumbnail. Lots of them are Siren Head like songs or Siren Head fighting these other things. It's all clickbaity and just very odd to look at. It's obviously meant for children. Now, I'm not one to judge content or anything. I'm a YouTuber just like they are, but I've already talked multiple times on this channel specifically about kid content farms and the kidification of internet horror as it revolves around the backrooms. I've made several videos about that and now I cannot stand it. And the same thing that's happening to the backrooms lore and the dumbing down and kidification of it on YouTube right now is happening to Trevor Henderson and Siren Head. It's already been happening to him. It happened to him first. And it's pretty sad that such popular things like the backrooms and like Siren Head and Cartoon Cat and other Trevor Henderson creatures and creations are facing that problem. But despite the trademark and copyright scandals and the weird videos and the brain rot and all of that, despite it all, one thing still stands for sure and above all of that. And it's that Siren Head is legendary. It's legendary in internet culture, in internet horror culture specifically, and it has made its mark on the entire internet since its creation in 2018. Like if you showed someone a picture of Siren Head right now and they are not in the internet horror culture and they do not know when it came out, they would probably know or recognize what that thing is just based off of how popular it's been. They probably seen it in a video or in a game or something. If you strip away all the things that have happened to Siren Head, like I said, the merchandise, the trademark stuff, the copyright stuff, the uncredited works, and all of that controversy, 
conspiracy and if you strip away the brain rot and everything else, at its simplest form, Siren Head is terrifying. It is horrifying. It's something that you would never want to experience. And when I was younger in 2018, it, it still freaked me out. I mean, it's literally just a scary thing. Just the idea of being inside the deep wilderness and walking around and to your right, what you thought was a tree moves slightly. And you look up and you hear the soft staticky gurgle and you see these two sirens and it starts moving and screaming that's a really scary spooky concept it's design it's description it's entire explanation by trevor it is such a perfect idea executed flawlessly by trevor henderson and that right there is what i think everybody should focus on and ignore the brain rot usage and ignore the other kinds of things like the knockoff animations and movies and just weird videos of stuff. None of that diminishes how legendary and, and scary this creature is. And none of that takes away its spot in the internet horror hall of fame. It just can't do it. I will personally never forget the craze of the internet around the time it was blowing up in 2019 and 2020. It was such an odd time in the entire spectrum of this area. I mean, it was literally in everything. Everybody was talking about Siren Head. Everybody was. And I don't know if it's because I was, you know, a teenager in that time, or if it was just like the perfect exact time of me getting on YouTube and stuff, but it was literally in everything I saw. And just that innocence of being terrified of a creation at its simplest form, that is what the internet lacks these days. Siren Head does not try to be something that it's not. It does not have to explain itself. It is scary, it is horrifying, because that is exactly what it is. Nothing more and nothing less. And even with the controversy and brand rot and all that stuff, it still has a special place in internet culture, in internet horror culture, and in many of y'all's and my hearts. So if you enjoyed this video, and if you enjoyed the Siren Head era of the internet, uh, leave a like. Even though it's got its really kind of complicated legacy that it's living out right now, I still find myself with this nostalgia feeling, just making this video and, and looking back to it. I mean, the entire reason I made this video was because I have so much nostalgia for it. And hopefully you all feel the same. But I know this video is in kind of a different style from what I normally do. And I know it's kind of different. I'm just a little experimenting. Nothing crazy, nothing nothing bombastic but if you did find yourself enjoying uh, i would appreciate a like that way i can tell if you actually enjoyed the video and just uh i'm really excited to see what y'all say in the comments below i can't be the only person that just remembers the entire internet having siren head everywhere i love making videos like this retrospectives and stuff if you want me to make more about other classic internet horror things like the Mandela catalog and stuff like that, mystery flesh pit perhaps, then please tell me in the comments. I would love to make them in this style. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. Make sure you tell somebody you love them because life is too short not to. And with all that blabbering out of the way, uh, I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.